Southern Oregon Friends of Hospice is a nonprofit organization that started in 2008, and it was the dream of a couple of individuals where they wanted to uh, support all the hospice care providers in Southern Oregon, educate the community about the importance of hospice care to both families and patients, and then also ultimately build a hospice house to serve the families and patients who aren't able to care for their loved ones at home on hospice. We have been looking for two, two and a half years now for some land to build the hospice house and we have done a design and kind of based on architectural principles for a hospice house. But uh, we have been challenged in finding that land and we really wanted at least an acre and a half in a park-like setting. I think because that environment is focused on end of life and helping that patient get there with the most comfort and, and, and as little pain as possible and helping the caregiver get there, get there with her or him. It's such a nurturing environment I envision for, at a hospice house, which you would not get in a hospital. Had my husband been able to be in a hospice house, it would, and I could depend on the people there, and nobody coming in and out, no new people to meet to care for him. I, it would have, it would have been such a help to me. I mean, I just, it's almost hard for me to imagine having that possible because, because my husband's death is still so near, and even though it's been five years, it's just so vivid in my life. I can't imagine doing it without hospice. I had hospice when my mom passed away about 20 years ago in Eugene. Was, this hospice was a totally different, much more encompassed than what I had before. So I just felt so lucky. And I just don't know how I could have done it without that. And unfortunately, there are not a lot of options when it isn't something that you can take them home that they'll pay for, we had four insurances, none of them would pay for anything except for like an eight hour nurse. And of course if you have hospice. Um, I think if, if we were in a hospice house setting, I think there would have been a lot more support for all the medical pieces. Jack was slowly becoming paralyzed over the course of six weeks. And um, so there was a lot of guessing as to what to do and calls to the nurse and um, lots of back and forth and always wondering, if I was giving him the right medication, um, if it was just the right thing, and, and trying to read his symptoms, I think was a little tricky for me. Um, and I always felt comforted when the nurses came, and I tried to get them to come every day. <laughs> Maybe multiple times a day, especially at the end. Um, and so I think it would, have, it would have felt much more supported by the doctors and nurses being present more consistently. So our specific niche as a hospice house will be that we'll have a real specialty in end of life care and there will be a very low patient to nurse ratio. We'll have an RN on our staff as well as an administrator and also specially trained volunteers. The services that will be provided will be people who are trained in hospice, not just medical that will be taught about bedside presence and how to be with people at the end of life, both to support the patient and their loved ones. And we hope this hospice house will be a world-class residential care facility that serves all the people in the valley. And as most people know, uh, medical resources can, can be very limited to special programs. Uh, hospice has been successful uh, in the United States and is here, but they can always use more monies. Southern Oregon Friends of Hospice is the nonprofit. The Hospice Unique Boutique is the fundraising arm of Southern Oregon Friends of Hospice. The, the store started with two lady streams. They didn't think they'd make any money the first year. They donated $5,000 at the end of the first 12 months. After four years, they donated $90,000.
who we have working for us now, being paid, being employees of Southern Oregon Friends of Hospice, have really helped us reach our goals more quickly than we thought we would be able to. The amounts of money that we've been able to raise just from this shop has been, it's been unbelievable to me. I started volunteering here four years ago. This was a resale store. Now it's so much more. It's such an intertwined into the fabric of the community. Our growth in donations, our sales, the number of volunteers, foot traffic has grown, not geometrically, but exponentially. A good part of the success at the Hospice Unique Boutique is due to our donors. Uh, everything in the store has been donated and these donations come from people who are finishing up garage sales and they've heard about us and are happy to bring things here and from people who have recent losses and people who have losses from years ago and have just decided that now's the time to release this particular item. It's more than dollars and cents. Every item that comes in this store has a history, has a story, has a place in someone's family. Sometimes you, you almost feel it. I think it's a comfort to them to know that these goods are gonna be purchased by someone who, who will love it and who will use it. And so the love of the person they had is gonna just continue. Sometimes I have people ask, is there really a need in Southern Oregon? A lot of people have nice places to live, we live in a pretty place, um, we have nice hospitals, is it really necessary? And it is. Um, I think when we envision what the design will look like, we, it's important to have not only space for the patient, but also a place for family. You see that already in really modern birth suites, you know, where someone can stay a family member. Vision that. One of the things that I really like about the hospice house is people who are drawn to a hospice house are people who are comfortable that we all die. Death, like birth, that life transition, it has a beauty. It has, it has this wonderful beauty to it. Um, I think it's important that a place like this be a place not only where people do die, but a place of living um, that time to its fullest. And often families are better able to do that if they're not being the caregiver. When you not only walk into, but drive into a place that is designed for people dying with beautiful aesthetics and convenience, it's created its own energy and it feels safe. So it's from the moment you enter that, the hope and the goal is that, oh, this feels like the right place to die. Water seems to be important in many cultures and it's hard to have a good relationship with water in a clinical facility. Most people's experience is getting wheeled into that shower that you're sharing with five people. We'd like to have some kind of pool um, or place where people can actually get in the water. And the reason a pool is lovely is because water allows for pain-free movement. Uh, we could swim with our patients. Start spreading. be able to probably use that for families that are visiting and we think the families and children are really important to have at a hospice house so we are hoping to have places where kids can play outdoors indoors it is overwhelming even if you have all the family members around you and you don't know what to do in a hospice house setting I think that that could be greatly alleviated by somebody, a person who knows as much as there is to know. That I didn't know much about hospice before my dad passed away, and I felt like I got my feet wet with my dad and realized, like, wow, hospice is amazing. Um, and really learned to love, I mean, every single person that we've ever come across that works with hospice has been amazing. And so, when I knew that Jack needed to have this kind of care, I tried to call them in right away and, and get them connected, the nurses and doctors connected with Jack as soon as possible. Look ahead and not be afraid to talk about death and what it is. 
and that dignity that comes up because it's things that you just don't even think about. Um, and I would, I would push to have a more of awareness to that part of life because that is part of life. It, it wasn't a consistent turnover. It was like five different people coming in my house. And on the last day of my husband's life, there was a brand new person I'd never had before. Um, it's hard to take, it's hard to sleep, even though my husband was in the same room with me. It was very hard to sleep with people in the house. A hospice house for a family to feel comfortable and welcome in that space is really a gift. End of life is not a medical experience, it's a life experience, it's a natural experience. And we want to support families and patients in that transition in the most beautiful way we can, in the most supportive way we can. In this moment, there is light. In this moment, there is If you'd like to get involved and help us make this hospice house a reality, please call 541-613-0543 or you can visit Southern Oregon Friends of Hospice website at sofriendsofhospice.org. You can also visit the Hospice Unique Boutique at 1618 Ashland Street in Ashland.